Apple's virtual reality platform is deep in development. Its release is set to do what hasn't been done before. Take VR mainstream. Whilst Oculus inventor Palmer Luckey and PlayStation have been instrumental in introducing VR to the mass market, it has yet to go mainstream. But that's all set to change now that Apple is throwing its wife's keys into the bowl. In case you didn't already know, the first thing to make clear is Apple is actually developing two separate extended reality products. XR is a catch-all term for visual-based devices that complement our sense of reality with digital information. What we're discussing today is Apple VR. This is a headset that covers the eyes with two screens and it immerses you in a virtual world with computer-drawn environments that you interact with. Separate from this, Apple is also developing AR glasses. They look like ordinary glasses which overlay a digital user interface that can report information about the real world you see. This is set to be a very special product category, but more on that in a separate video. Apple VR is expected to include an AR pass-through mode, so users can experience AR features at home. This will help Apple engineers refine the software in time for the Apple AR product launch. Whilst leaks about Apple's XR aspirations have been relatively recent, it had in fact secretly been researching these technologies for over 25 years. It was in the early 90s that the concept of a head-mounted device to enter virtual worlds reached wider public awareness. In part, because of high-profile movies including The Lawnmower Man, Strange Day, and Johnny Mnemonic, and early VR devices including the Nintendo Virtual Boy and Sega VR1. In 1995, Gavin Miller, who was then a senior research scientist for Apple, published a paper on the company's website on the topic of hyperreality. It discussed how best to visually depict objects in a virtual reality environment and also how to light real-world objects suggesting proto-augmented reality research, which he coined as composite virtual reality. He also discussed the merits of different lens technologies. Miller built on his knowledge and is now the head of research for Adobe projects on VR, AR and AI and leading the firm's charge into the metaverse. In 1996, at the Engineering Reality of Virtual Reality Free Conference for pioneering tech engineers and manufacturers, a summary of the conference reported Apple revealed a prototype wearable computer system with a virtual input-output head-mounted display. So back in 96, there were people outside of the highly secretive Apple who got to see and perhaps use its very first VR device. Apple has been playing the long game. It's been holding off rushing into a new product category until the technology advancements and market conditions are right. And if 25 years ago Apple was researching for a product years away, can you imagine what products Apple is researching today for release 25 years into the future? Apple has since quietly been building a division focused on VR and AR research. In 2015, Apple hired Mike Rockwell, who was the Executive Vice President of Products and Technology at Dolby, to lead its AR division. In 2016, it poached Doug Bauman from his post as a leading VR professor and researcher for Virginia Tech University. He's an expert on 3D user interfaces and in 2004 wrote a book that explained the interaction principles and techniques specific to 3D environments, which has been influential for 3D developers and could be relevant to AR-specific work. Sterling Crispin, who created VR painting app CyberPaint, joined Apple in 2018 to work as a neurotechnology prototyping researcher, where he says he contributed to the vision, user research, and development of a multi-year investigation into a new international scale Apple service category. He left in October 2021 to join Snap to work on its Spectacles project as a design engineer. He would have been hired for his knowledge of this field. Arthur Van Hoff, the founder of Jaunt, which was a VR AR startup, joined Apple in 2019 as a senior architect. In early 2021, Apple announced its longtime hardware engineering senior vice president, Dan Riccio, would be leading a new, as yet undisclosed project, widely thought to be a VR AR division. For at least the past 10 years, Apple has filed a series of patents that demonstrate the multiple strands of research with VR AR products and the tech that enables them to work, including a headset that works with an external device, likely an iPhone, and gaze tracking which tracks where the user is looking to increase the visual detail there that is made more accurate by analysing the glint in the eye's pupil. 
Apple has made a series of low-profile acquisitions of VR AR companies with a clear intent to acquire their R&D, their patents, and their human talent. Most notably, in 2015, it bought Swiss firm FaceShift, which had developed tech that enabled game developers and film studios to capture facial expressions and convert them to animated in real time. The value of this is clear. Conveying a VR user's expressions and emotions onto their photorealistic avatar whilst in a professional or academic VR meeting, or for transposing a VR user's expressions onto a fantasy avatar in a game, maintaining their anonymity whilst conveying their personality. Walk around the block a bit, wag my tail. In 2016, it bought Emotion, who specialized in using AI to read facial expressions to determine a person's emotional state. And most recently, in 2020, it bought NextVR, a firm that specializes in broadcasting VR content of live events, including sports matches and concerts, via its app to multiple VR platforms, including Oculus and PlayStation VR and Oculus Go. It had partnerships with sports organizations, including Wimbledon and the NBA. As Apple has bought MLB Baseball to Apple TV subscribers, it's clear to see how it could use NextVR to offer a more immersive experience for fans. All this research, all these talent hires, all these acquisitions is enough evidence to show that Apple is jumping in hard on VR. <laughs> VR manufacturers when targeting their products have to walk a tightrope, balancing between making a headset that is powerful in its ability to animate worlds and portability and ease of use. Premium PC VR platforms like Valve Index and HTC Vive have high detail lenses for sharper visuals and sensors that require placement in the corners of a room that can precisely track a user's movements in a 3D space. But these come at the expense of portability and require an expensive PC to run the software. PlayStation VR 2 will offer a more affordable premium VR experience, so AAA quality flat games will be able to run on it. However, this also comes at the expense of being tethered to a PS5 console. Facebook's MetaQuest 2 takes a different approach. It's a standalone product with all the processing components built into the headset. This is great for portability, as there's no setup required and you can use it anywhere. However, the big trade-off is that because it's using a processor found in some Android phones, it's not very powerful, the graphics aren't detailed, and it's not capable of running more ambitious VR games. What Apple is seeking to do is resolve the power versus portability conundrum. Apple VR will be a standalone device that has all its computational hardware built in so that a Mac or PC computer won't be required to run it. It will be compact, portable and use a powerful Apple processor so that unlike the MetaQuest 2, it can run premium software. Thanks to the website The Information, we have a pretty good idea of what the headset will look like. It shared a sketch which it claims is based on a late stage prototype and this has been used to make realistic concept art. Its form factor will be similar to the MetaQuest. It will be designed to be lightweight, with soft yet firm sweat-resistant fabric, and ergonomic so that it's not overly heavy on one side. VR headsets have a reputation for looking ugly, but with Apple's design team involved, you can bet they're going to do their best to have it looking sleek. When it comes to computing power is where it gets really exciting. Industry analyst Ming-Chi Kuo said it will house two processors, one high-end processor which will be the equivalent of an Apple Silicon M1 chip. Ultimately, the later it launches, this could end up being the even more advanced M2 chip. It will be dedicated to running complex software with high detail graphics and frame rates and be able to draw them on the headset's lenses at a high resolution. Additionally, there will be a second lower-end processor which will be used purely for sensor-related tasks. This means identifying the user's position and physical actions in a 3D space to translate them into input data for VR and AR programs. Apple VR will have two micro OLED panels, one for each eye, possibly made by Sony. 4K resolution means there will be high detail and with up to 3000 pixels per inch, everything will look sharper, which is necessary to overcome the blurry visuals with some VR platforms. It will mean that reading in-game text will be clearer. To put this into perspective on how big a leap it is over current standalone VR hardware, the MetaQuest has 1920 by 1832 resolution per eye, with an estimated 200 to 300 PPI per eye. 
Apple VR will use spatial audio technology. This is realistic surround sound that is used in tandem with VR visuals to enhance the experience to the user that they are in a different place. The sound can be sent wirelessly to headphones, perhaps for example like the AirPods Pro 2. One report claims that a swappable headband will have spatial audio technology, suggesting small speakers on it foregoing the need for separate headphones. There will be an integrated microphone that can be used for VR audio commands and of course Siri. For positional tracking, it's almost a given that Apple VR will use inside-out tracking. This works by using a series of cameras and sensors on the headset that detect how a user's position changes and reflects that in VR. Being able to interact in virtual worlds is an essential part of the VR experience, so an input device is required. One report by Ming-Chi Kuo cites that Apple VR will have 3D sensing modules, which could be the inside-out tracking to detect hand gestures, which will be able to detect changes in the dynamic details of the hand. This may be accurate enough to detect gestures, such as a finger click, making an OK sign, or a peace sign, and more. The downside of using gesture-only control is that it lacks the haptic feedback that users are familiar with in game console controllers, and controllers for other VR platforms, and even in smartphones. This was a big criticism of Xbox's Kinect, where users complained the lack of force feedback left them feeling disconnected. Being able to feel a vibration or a shake or a bang which you experience in VR adds to the immersion and the feeling of responsiveness. Whilst there haven't been any leaks pertaining to Apple's VR control mechanism, it seems probable that Apple will look to offer dedicated VR controllers similar to those used by the MetaQuest or PlayStation VR 2. Additionally, Apple has filed patents for thimble-like controllers that track a user's finger movements with reference to any surface, including, in some cases, the surface of another finger, the user's palm, and so on. At this stage, these seem like AR controllers because they are so discreet and could be worn in everyday life. And if Apple VR does have the AR mode, they will be able to be used with it, but they don't seem suitable as VR-dedicated controllers. Apple VR and AR will be a new computing platform, so it requires its own unique operating system. App Store upload logs and Apple source code reveals multiple references to Reality OS. So this could be the final name for it. And it's a fitting name. Of course, it will be built on the core of iOS, but likely streamlined for efficiency and to take advantage of unique VR and AR features. And in Apple's code, references to a Reality OS simulator have also been discovered. This is likely being used by developers to build and test Apple VR AR compatible software before having the actual hardware. A trademark application was made in December 2021 for Reality OS, citing wearable computer hardware. It was made by an unknown business, possibly a shell company for Apple. Whilst there are no leaks about its capabilities, what we can infer from Apple's purchase of face shift and emotion is that Apple VR may have the technology to read facial expressions, including eye movements, and translate them onto a digital avatar. I speculate that Apple will also be working on an unintrusive system to send and receive notifications and make and receive phone calls whilst in VR. One of the core innovations of the iPhone was the launch of the App Store, which democratized app publishing and provided users with an incredible choice of content. A wild west of options, some of them superb, some terrible. However, if Apple follows this same approach on VR, it could be making a dreadful mistake. You see, Apple VR will get its own App Store, and initially at least, it will need to ensure that it's tightly curated. This is because VR apps and games are relatively new and the design and playability choices developers make are at the moment experimental as they try and discover what control mechanisms work best in VR. As a consequence, some games have bad controls. More pertinent is the issue of VR sickness, which is a type of motion sickness users may have when using VR. Personally, I love VR, I love it, but that isn't to say that I don't get VR sick and that isn't to say there aren't games that can amplify that feeling. Five minutes with rigs on PSVR and I had cold sweats, a killer headache, and I needed to vomit everywhere. What if a mischievous developer designs and publishes a VR game with the sole purpose of causing user discomfort and inducing VR sickness? It could happen. That would not be good feedback for Apple. It would lead to bad word of mouth and possibly result in some abandoning Apple VR so Apple will likely choose to strongly curate the App Store until it becomes established. No word on apps yet, but you can bet Apple will want to have games and educational software that showcase VR's abilities. 
Roblox is the nearest established platform that embraces metaverse ideals. It's been a massive hit with kids for years. It's popular on iOS and it already has a VR edition. So bringing this to Apple VR seems like a given. Likewise, the eternally popular Minecraft has a VR edition on PSVR and PC VR, and this would be a lovely showcase title. As Microsoft is not ready to release a VR AR consumer product, it will be happy to expand its audience. And if it has any sense, perhaps Skyrim VR 2, which could build anticipation for its Elder Scrolls 6 in VR game. VR is also going to be about their social aspect and interacting with other people. Facebook is trying to establish Horizon Worlds, but considering the low-key tensions between Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg, Horizon Worlds is not likely to be there at launch. So a social platform will be needed, whether that will be something like VR Chat or Apple launching a bespoke platform remain to be seen. With salacious newspaper reports about people being hurt in the metaverse and Horizon World suffering from a metaverse problem, the issue of user safety and especially child safety needs to be preemptively addressed before Apple VR launches. This will require age restriction on apps for non-adults and parental controls on the headset to prevent a child logging in with alternative accounts. As Apple VR product will receive so much press attention, it can't afford to get this wrong. Whilst the initial predictions were that Apple VR would release autumn or winter 2022, the leakers have pushed back their predictions, which could be because of supply issues or simply that it's just not ready yet. I expect to see a full reveal at WWDC 2023, giving smaller developers a chance to get involved for a pre-Christmas 2023 release. So, how much will this thing cost? Bloomberg reporter and non-leaker Mark Gurman has said that it will be a pricey niche precursor to a more ambitious augmented reality product. All sorts of prices have been banded about from $1,500 to a ridiculous $6,000. It's foolish to speculate, but it will be more powerful than a premium iPhone with double the screens and more detection technologies and control devices. This will cost more than that. But the indications are that Apple is not going for mass market, so it will have a high-end price. Virtual reality is an exciting and dynamic technology, but whilst it's been a decade since the modern VR era began, the initial offerings limitations have confined them to a niche product. The thing is, VR can be so much more than that. That's why Apple getting into VR is such an exciting proposition. It will allow Apple to finally deliver on a product it has spent decades researching. But with Apple launching into this product category, it will finally give VR the legitimacy it has needed to tempt big business. Once it does, you better believe hardware manufacturers, software publishers, media, advertisers, educators, creators will all be on board. And then it will be the start of the VR revolution.